All right, Dad, the car's packed. Ready to go when you are. What do you got? This is my first ever Newt Rockne book. Who's that? Newt Rockne, greatest American football coach who ever lived. Legend in his own time. A legend frozen in time as he died in a plane crash at the age of 42. How about this? Outlined against a blue gray October sky, the four horsemen rode again. In dramatic lore, they are known as famine, pestilence, destruction, and death. The real names are Stuhldreyer, Miller, Crowley, and Layden. They formed the crest of the South Bend Cyclone, coached that day by Newt Rockney before which another fighting army team was swept over. Wow. Or how about this? By Newt Rockne himself. The most dangerous thing in American life today is that we're getting soft, inside and out. We are losing that forceful heritage of mind and body that once was our most precious possession. I have spent my life working out that flaccid philosophy Looking out of my boys' minds and bodies. I believe the finest work of man is building the character of man. I have tried to build courage, initiative, tolerance, and persistence, without which the most educated brain of man is not worth much. I could you read that and not want to play football? I read this book almost every day for the first 18 years of my life. I can tell. <laughs> Not by choice, though. It was on Pop's required reading list. It was the only book on Pop's required reading list. It was the only book Pop would let me read. He thought the Newt Rockney story was the only story I needed to get the proper motivation to get through childhood. I remember he would sit there in his oversized, stuffed deluxe University of Georgia football helmet slash chair that actually reclined in three positions, halfback, quarterback, and fullback. And there it sits. Anyway, I'd bring all these books home from the library. He'd look at them, he'd look at me, he'd look at the books, and he'd say, Shakespeare. Was that Bill Shakespeare? Yeah, I know who he is, son. He's that English fella who writes about pucks and fairies running through the woods late at night with nothing on but their underclothes. Hey, that's not the kind of thing we're after in this house. Are we clear? I finally got permission to bring Hemingway home after I convinced Pop that the old man in the sea was a deep sea fishing story with a competitive edge. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. And that Hemingway had once coached football at Oregon State University. Hemingway. Yeah, I believe I know who he is. Defensive coordinator. Now you say he's an outdoorsman and he's writing books about it. Well, hell, we should have him over for dinner. You know, when I was a little guy, Pop could never just read books to me the way they were written, like Humpty Dumpty or... Jack and the Beanstalk, there always had to be some motivational lesson involved that I had to personally uncover. And very often the philosophies of Newt Rockney had a strange habit of finding their way into these stories. Johnny, why, why do you think Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall? I, I don't know, Pop, was he shot? No, Johnny wasn't shot. He was weak. <laughs> Didn't have any offensive strategy. 
If you look a little deeper into the story, you might find he wasn't a particularly good team player. Bottom line, he wasn't prepared. Now, knowing that, why do you think all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put this egg back together again? I'd say he was, he was broke. Well, I think that's what I said. It's a good answer. He said, no, son. Finances had nothing to do with it. He was fat. <laughs> Come on. Look at the photograph, John. He wasn't in particularly good shape at the time of the fall. Then this question would always follow. What would Newt Rockney have done in a similar situation? And for the life of me, I couldn't imagine what Newt Rockney and Humpty Dumpty could possibly have to do with one another. Well, I'll tell you right now, son, had Rockney been there, son of a bitch wouldn't have been on that wall to begin with. Are we clear? You know, the only children's book Pop ever did read to me in its original form was a little engine that could. No changes were required. All the motivational factors were already built in. I think I can. I think I can. That was it. I think I can. There was one story that Pop would tell me. This one was different. It was different because it was actually his own story. Want to hear it? Yeah. It's 1950. We're playing Fort Meade. State championship games on the line. We're down six nothing. It's our last game together as a team. There are fifteen thousand people at the game. The stadium only holds ten thousand. Sky is stormy and echoes with rolling thunder. Suddenly a lightning bolt streaks across the sky. <laughs> and the power of new rock muse within me. It starts to rain. Harder. Harder. And harder still. The quarterback calls my number for a pass. 81, 81, 81. I line up, puddles forming at my feet, with the power of New Rockney riding high on my right shoulder. Sad. 